Something weird is happening in the woods outside my house, and I don't know what to do. I guess let's just start at the beginning. This isn't really my house, it was my grandpa's, but I guess it's mine now. He died a couple months ago, and because of some tricky paperwork, I'm apparently responsible for it now. He lived pretty far away, up in the mountains by the lake. There are a couple other houses down the road, but they seem like they're empty for the season. I assume they're summer houses. I've been here for a few days and it's really pretty, but it's super quiet and chilly. My mom never talked about my grandpa, and I only met him once when I was really young. I think they had a bad relationship, but the few times I asked about it she got annoyed and changed the subject. So basically, I don't really know what I'm doing here. This guy from my grandpa's estate basically told me the house is mine now, so I came up here to sell it as fast as I can and go home. I guess it's not that easy to just sell a house, especially one in the middle of nowhere. At any rate, I think I'm alone up here. Or at least I was. I figured I'd be up here for a couple of weeks to get this all handled and then I'd go home and be done with it. I'm on a break from grad school so I don't have any other responsibilities at the moment. But now weird things are starting to happen. It started on my third day here. There's a little town about 25 minutes away and I'd gone to get some food and supplies since I don't know how long I'm staying. When I got back that evening, there was something strange on my door. It was this... artifact? I don't know what to call it. It was obviously handmade. It was made of sticks and twine and had some small bones tied into the middle of it. I didn't think too much of it at the time. I figured it was probably a kid from one of the other houses trying to mess with me, so I took it off the door and tossed it in the fireplace. By the next morning, I'd pretty much forgotten about it. And honestly, I had too much on my plate at the moment to worry about some kid's prank. So I got up that morning, made some breakfast, and went out on the deck with some coffee. I was sitting there drinking my coffee when I noticed something hanging in a tree just over the railing. It was another one of those artifacts. It was just like the last one, but it had a rock tied to it instead of a bone. And then almost immediately I saw another one in a tree farther down by the ground. I went down the deck steps to retrieve it, and then I started seeing even more of them. I found about eight in total, hanging in trees all around the house. They all had different objects tied to them. Bones, feathers, that sort of thing. It was definitely weird, but I was more annoyed than anything, thinking that someone was in my yard decorating the trees with these ugly goth Christmas ornaments. Also, if someone was trying to scare me, it was going to take more than some bullshit arts and crafts projects to do the trick. I gathered all the artifacts together and burned them like the first one. After I disposed of all the stick things, I took a shower, got dressed, and went back outside to do some basic tidying and whatnot. The deck in the yard is sort of overgrown and leaves are starting to fall and cover everything. Being a new homeowner is a lot of work, turns out. That was when I found something that actually did make me nervous. I was raking a corner of the yard when I saw something dark on the ground, off in the trees. I couldn't tell what it was from afar, so I went to investigate. At first I thought it was a blanket, but when I got closer it looked like a big sweatshirt or a hoodie or something. I didn't want to touch it, but it was obviously clothing of some kind. I looked around and realized it was a whole encampment. There were a couple old socks, a pair of what I think was underwear? Gross. A few old napkins scattered around, plastic spoon, and creepiest of all, a beat up notebook. I flipped open the notebook, but nothing was written inside. A whole bunch of pages had been ripped out of it, so I know someone had been using it. Plus you could sort of see the shadow of pen marks on the most recent page. I couldn't make out what had been written though. Anyway, that definitely freaked me out. It was clear someone was camping out on my property and possibly trying to scare me out of the house. Wasn't really sure what to do about it though. What could I do? I definitely didn't sleep well that night. That was the day before yesterday. The next morning, I sort of expected more weird artifacts to be outside, but I didn't see anything. And the encampment was gone, so I figured it was probably a homeless person passing through or something. The driveway ends a ways up from the house, and then you have to trek down a path which bends around around the side of the house to get in. I was walking around the house when I saw some movement across the yard, near a tree. I froze dead in my tracks. Someone was standing under a tree staring at my house. They didn't see me though, since I was also partly behind some trees and a good distance away. Whoever it was, they were wearing the same dark hoodie I'd seen in the grass the day before. As quietly as I could set down my shopping bags next to me and slip my phone out of my pocket. I managed to take a couple of photos, but the person turned and disappeared into the woods. 
stood there for a couple of minutes, too nervous to move in case the person came back. But they didn't, so I picked up my bags and hurried inside. I picked up the phone to call the cops, but put it back down because I didn't even know what I'd tell them. Someone was looking at my house? Like any police officer would take me seriously. And like an idiot, I destroyed all the weird artifacts from before, so there wouldn't even be any evidence. I felt like there was nothing I could do right then. I was mad at myself and feeling scared all alone in the house, so I locked all the doors and left out the back. I went down to the lake because I didn't know where else to go. I just knew I didn't want to be in the house at that moment. I walked a ways down the lake shore and then sat for a while looking out at the water. I thought about getting in my car and just going home, but I felt like that would get me in trouble. There's all sorts of property tax stuff I don't understand. I felt trapped. Also, I couldn't decide if I was actually in any danger. When my grandpa died, it took me a couple of months to actually get up to the house, so maybe someone was squatting in the empty house? And now that I'm here, they might just leave on their own accord. It was starting to get dark out, so I reluctantly headed back to the house. I walked up the stairs leading to the back of the house, but right before going inside I got this weird chill. I made up my mind that I absolutely did not want to stay in the house overnight. I decided to go get my car and drive it to town to find a motel for the night. The house was all locked up and I already had my keys, so I went back around the house and toward the path that led to the driveway. And that's when I saw her. The figure from before, standing right in the middle of my front lawn, staring straight at my house. I froze in place, completely in shock. I was practically right next to her, but it was almost as if she didn't see me. Then it hit me. She couldn't see me. Because she had no eyes. She had no fucking eyes. Just shiny skin over where her eyes should be. And she had almost no hair at all. I wanted to run, but I felt like if I moved even a little, she'd hear me. As quietly as I could, I went for my phone. I needed some sort of evidence to show the cops. It all felt like it was happening in slow motion. I feel sick to my stomach as I'm writing this, but I was able to get it on video. My heart is racing just thinking about this. I haven't been able to watch it since I recorded it, but here it is. I ran back around the house and got inside. I scrambled upstairs and looked out my bedroom window at the front yard, but she had vanished. Remembering it now, it feels like it didn't really happen, like it was a nightmare or something. I called the cops and explained what had happened. I'm sure I sounded crazy, but they said they'd send someone by the morning and to keep my doors locked. So, that's where I am now, alone in the woods, freaking out. I know I won't be able to sleep tonight. I feel lightheaded and nauseous. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared shitless. The past couple of days have been really strange. I also have shitty reception up here, so I'm sorry for not updating. They set a police officer up yesterday morning, but I feel like it didn't accomplish anything. I explained everything to the cop, and even took him out to the clearing where I found the stuff, but it was all gone except for the notebook. And since the notebook is empty, it was basically useless. I feel like the cop didn't believe me anyway. I showed him the photos I took of the stick things, and he said at worst it counted as vandalism, but without physical evidence of trespassing, they couldn't do anything. Even when I showed him the video, he still acted really skeptical. He kept asking if I knew the person in the video. I think he thought I was pranking him or something. I ended up just getting frustrated. The cops had to call the station if something happened. After he left, I went back and got the notebook from the clearing. Maybe there's a way to figure out what was written on the last page. I don't know. Anyway, the cop drove away and I was alone again. It's so damn quiet up here. All I want to do is leave, but I feel like I can't. I'm so far away from home that I can't even invite a friend up here to keep me company. And even if someone did come, it would take them a couple days. I haven't seen the woman from before, but I feel like she's still out there. And other weird things are happening too. I took a walk around the lake yesterday because I wanted to get a look at the other houses in the area. Maybe see if someone else has noticed anything weird. But they're all empty. Every house is totally dark and there's no cars in any of the driveways. I haven't seen a single person at all, except once. Well, 
sort of. After I came back from my walk, I was out on the deck and saw a boat in the water, way off in the distance. They weren't moving. They stayed there all afternoon. I feel like they were watching me. They actually stayed out there in the same place until it got too dark to see them anymore. Normally, I'd think they were just fishing, if it weren't for what happened the day before. And the fact that all those houses seem empty? Where did they come from? Boat was gone this morning. So, who knows. I microwaved some oatmeal for breakfast and took it down to the dock near the water. It's weird, but I sort of feel safer down there. Water makes me feel less stressed, I guess. I kind of feel like time goes by faster when I'm by the lake. It's like, meditative or whatever. Anyway, I was actually starting to feel a little better about everything this morning, if it wasn't for what happened next. I finished my oatmeal and I was starting back towards the house when I noticed something in the water. It was in this little inlet by the shore. It was small and white, and at first I thought it was a brightly colored rock. But I wasn't sure. It seemed too round. Probably against my better judgment, I took off my shoes and went into the water to retrieve it. It was an eyeball. A fucking eyeball. This has to be from an animal, right? Please tell me this is from a big fish or something. I threw it back in the water and hustled back up to the house. I washed my hands in the sink and then sat on the couch for a long time. I don't know what's going on. I can't believe I picked that up out of the water. I still feel gross. And to make matters worse, the boat is back out there. It showed up again this afternoon and it's just sitting there in the same place as yesterday. Are they watching me from the boat? I keep hearing things at night. I stand out on the deck and I feel like I can hear things moving through the trees. It's probably just deer or something, but I can't help imagining it's something else. I'm sure I'm making it out to be worse than it is. Are deer nocturnal? I see them out on the road sometimes when I'm driving into town. I try not to think about it. But last night, it was worse. I heard... screams? That sounds so stupid to say, but... I don't know what else to call it. I was brushing my teeth and heard something out the bathroom window. I'm sure it was an animal, but my toothbrush was buzzing, so I, I can't be sure. And then this morning, I found the bloody remains of something. Right in the middle of my yard. It was literal intestines, and they were fresh. I feel like I can't even post something like that to Twitter. Like, is it going to get flagged if I post it? I don't know what to do. Maybe I could upload it separately and share the link or something? Fair warning, this is pretty gross. So don't look if you're squeamish. I'm sure it's an animal, but what did this? And why was it left right in front of my house? I won't put up the, uh, the image because it is a bit gross, but I will put the link in the description below. Yeah, sorry. It's disgusting. Anyway, I scooped it up with a shovel and flung them into the woods a ways away from the house. I don't know if bears are up here, but I couldn't leave it. And besides, animal guts are the least of my worries right now. I have other things on my mind. Been trying to figure out what's written in this notebook from the woods. I've had it for a couple of days and I can see faint letters, but I can't make them out. A bunch of people replied and told me to do a pencil or charcoal rubbing. But I didn't have anything like that. Found a bunch of pens, but no pencils, so I had to go back into town. It was actually really hard to find charcoal. I finally had some luck at this little hardware store. The box didn't even have a price tag on it, so I feel like it had been sitting on the shelf for years. Seems like people in town are starting to recognize me. I don't like it. I didn't plan to be here that long, but it looks like I might not have a choice. People are nice, though. Uh, but it seems like the kind of town where everyone knows everyone, and I definitely don't belong. When I was in the hardware store, these little kids were following me around, giggling and making fun of me. I think they were twins. I couldn't really hear what they were saying, but I'm sure they were making fun of me because little kids are jerks. On the way out of town, I stopped at the grocery store. But they were out of some of the things I wanted. It seems like they're always out of stuff. They've been out of eggs for a couple of days, so I just got some Pop-Tarts and stuff and left. Anyway, the notebook. I've actually been putting it off for most of the afternoon because I wasn't sure I wanted to find out what that woman was writing in it. I can't ignore it forever. 
I'm gonna eat dinner, and then I guess I'll try the charcoal. I'll be back in a bit. Jesus. So I did a charcoal rubbing over the most recent page in the book, like people were telling me to. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. I'm sort of freaking out. What even is this? What the fuck? I feel like I'm gonna throw up. I need to go sit down. What the hell is going on? I called my mom yesterday. I wanted to see if she knew anything about this place. She said I've actually been here before when I was really young. I don't remember any of it. I tried to ask her again why she never got along with my grandfather, but she's so cagey about it. She grew up in a town nearby, and my grandfather didn't move into this house until after my mom left for school. I guess she never really came back. We talked for a little bit, but my reception here is spotty. She asked me if there's still wine in the cellar, and I told her there wasn't a cellar. But she said there is. Down in the basement, off to a corner. After she hung up, I went downstairs to look, and she was right. There's a bunch of old antique stuff in the basement. Behind some filing cabinets, there's a dusty little wine cellar. I can't believe I missed it at first. It's full of wine, and some of it is really old. There were also these weird wooden wine stoppers all over the place. From the looks of this, it seems like nobody's been down here for a while. Poor guy. And look at some of these bottles. I don't know anything about wine. I wonder if they're good. Anyway, at least I have a surplus of alcohol down here to take my mind off how weird things have been lately. This house keeps surprising me. I keep finding weird shit around the property. Like there's a collapsed shed in the back, a little ways through the trees. It's not that strange, I guess, but I can't help overthinking everything I see now. Little ways away from the shed, I found this in the middle of a clearing. What is this? None of it makes sense, and there's something else I found that I can't stop thinking about. There's so much junk around the house, and I'm trying to clean it up. Partly because it'll help this place sell faster, but also to keep my mind off things. I was sorting through some debris and found these old rusty letters in a pile on the ground, partly under the foundation. I could see some nail holes on the side of the house, so I think they were on the house at one point. I know sometimes people give lake houses names, I can't figure out what they might have said, though. I brought them inside and laid them all out on the kitchen floor to see if I could make sense of them. But no luck so far. Maybe someone else can figure it out? Sorry for not updating in a while. The reception up here is terrible, and I haven't been able to get Twitter to load all that often. This is lots of wine in the cellar, so I haven't been too bored. I've been mostly trying to keep busy getting the house in shape to sell. A realtor is supposed to come up here next week to help me formally list it, which is good because I'd like to get out of here. But there's something weird about the town down the road that I can't figure out. I'm beginning cabin fever pretty bad, so the other day I drove into town to have breakfast and wandered around a little bit to get my mind off things. There's only one restaurant in the whole town from what I can tell. I went in there to eat and the whole experience was sort of bizarre. I'm not really sure how to explain it. Anyway, I ordered the Eggs Benedict off the menu. The waitress had a pretty chilly attitude, but nothing out of the ordinary. But then she brought out my food. They'd totally forgotten the eggs on my Eggs Benedict. It was just ham and hollandaise. I called the waitress back and told her she'd forgotten my eggs, and all she said was, we don't have that. I asked how a diner could be out of eggs, especially early in the day. She just said, sorry, and walked away. It was so weird. I was confused, so I took a second look at the menu. I realized the description doesn't actually list eggs in the Benedict. And then I realized eggs aren't listed anywhere on the menu, even in the sides. What kind of a diner doesn't have eggs at all? That might make sense in a vegan restaurant or something, but they have meat all over the menu. I can't figure it out. Also, on my way out, there was this family in a booth sort of watching me leave. They were all being really quiet in a sort of obvious way. They had two twin girls with them. I'm definitely not coming back here. I was thinking about it the whole way home. 
There are too many things that don't make sense. I don't feel any closer to figuring it out. But one thing seems clear. I'm not welcome here. When I got home, I found something folded up and wedged in my front door near the handle. Someone clearly wants me gone. It was written on the back of a tag of some sort. I suspect it was that eyeless woman from before. I haven't seen her, but I think she's still out there. I think something bad is coming. I'm going to go pop another bottle of wine. I don't know what else to do right now. I saw something out in the woods today. I've been trying not to spend all my time at the house, since being cooped up all the time makes me feel crazy. Even though it might not be super safe to be out alone in the woods, it still feels better than being home all the time. God, I can't believe I just referred to that place as home. I've been here too long. Anyway, I was taking a walk today. These woods would be so pretty if I didn't feel like someone was going to murder me out here. I was almost enjoying myself when I stumbled into a clearing and found something strange. There was a single filthy chair overlooking a ledge. It didn't seem that creepy at first, but I got this funny feeling, so I took up my phone and pulled up my Maps app. And sure enough, the chair was pointed in the exact direction of my house. I was probably a mile away from the house at that point, but it was still weird. It made me feel queasy, and I didn't want to stick around, so I hustled out of there. But I'd barely walked 30 feet when I found something else. Something way worse. I don't even know how to describe it. What the hell is this? I took a video of it too. It freaked me out, but I was mesmerized by it at the same time. I could stop staring at it. I felt like I was in a daze. Seems like every day there's something new, but I'm not close to understanding what's happening out here or why. I finally pulled myself away and practically stumbled away for the rock. I felt dizzy walking away. I just wanted to go back home. I started back in the direction of the house, and that's when I saw her, that woman from before. She was standing up on a hill, seemingly staring at nothing. I darted behind a nearby tree, but luckily I don't think she saw me. I hadn't seen her in weeks, but I knew she was still out here. I took a video from behind the tree. Don't even know why. It's not like it'll do any good, but at least I have proof that I wasn't imagining any of this. Eventually she left the hill and disappeared into the woods. Once I was sure she was gone, I left the tree and practically ran back home. The whole way back I kept expecting her to appear again and attack me or something. I don't understand what she's doing out here. Is she a witch? That sounds so stupid. But I don't know how to explain any of this. Those weird stick artifacts and now this thing on the rock? It feels like fucking witchcraft or something. And who's on the boat I keep seeing out there on the lake? Why is everyone in town so weird? At this point I just want answers and I feel like I'm getting close to getting them. I'm just scared of what they might be. I found out what those letters spell. I'd basically forgotten about it after finding them outside the house. I put them in the back of the closet and pretty much stopped thinking about them. But yesterday I found something else. There's this little alcove upstairs with built-in shelves and a bunch of old books. Sort of a mini library. I was flipping through some of them looking for something to read when I came across this little book about wine. Tucked inside were a couple of old Polaroid photos. They were pretty faded, so it was hard to make out what they were. The first one was pretty unremarkable. It looks like it's just photos of the trees outside. The second one was even blurrier. For a minute, I didn't know what I was looking at. But then I realized it was of the house and the letters I found on the ground a couple weeks ago. The photo was super fuzzy, so it took me a second, but I was able to make it out. Deep Water Chapel. This is so weird. I've never heard that name before. Was my house a church or something? 
I spent the afternoon going through all the other books in the library, but didn't find any other pictures. I don't know what to make of this. I'll let you know if I find anything else, but yeah, I don't know. She was here. That woman was in my house. Sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I can barely type. Sorry. I'll try to explain. Alright, so. I was in the woods out back yesterday when it started pouring. It happened really suddenly, and even though I wasn't far from the house, I got soaked anyway. It rained most of the evening. I left my clothes by the fireplace to dry and ended up going to bed early. Or I guess it was today. Sorry, I'm still not really awake yet. Anyway, I had this awful dream tonight. Sorry if I'm rambling a bit, I'm still trying to collect my thoughts. Sorry, my hands are shaking. In the dream, I was on the deck outside with a bunch of friends from back home. We were all sitting in a circle. My friend Eric was there, talking about how creepy the woods were. He was saying how the trees were just big black silhouettes and anything could be out there watching you and you'd never know it. He was sort of freaking me out, but I was trying not to show it. I'm all, I know what you're doing, and it's not going to work. You're not going to scare me. And Eric sort of narrowed his eyes at me and says, I bet I can scare you. Something about the way he said it made me feel uneasy. And I was like, all right, very funny. You can stop now. But Eric wasn't smiling anymore. He was just staring back at me. The whole mood seemed to shift at that point. Nobody in the circle was talking anymore and it suddenly got really quiet. No sound except the wind and the lake down below. Any trace of joking has disappeared from Eric's face. After a long minute, he slowly cocked his head to the side a bit and said, Is there someone here with us right now who shouldn't be? All of a sudden, I was too scared to break Eric's gaze, afraid I'd see something I didn't want to. For a long time, we just stared at each other. Nobody said anything. Then very softly, Eric said, Is there somebody watching you sleep right now, Greg? That's when I bolted awake. It was the middle of the night, I was alone in my room, but I had this weird feeling that someone had just been there in the room with me. I laid there in bed for a minute, too terrified to move, too scared to breathe even. And then I heard something downstairs. At least I thought I did. This house is always making sounds, so I, I couldn't be sure. I hesitated for a second, then crept out of bed and went down the hall, trying to be as quiet as possible. From the second floor landing, I could see the living room and part of the kitchen. Everything seemed normal. I could hear the wind blowing pretty loudly outside, so I figured maybe I hadn't heard anything at all. I tried to calm myself down. I was wide awake at that point and too shaken to go back to bed, so I went downstairs to get a snack or some coffee or something. I walked into the kitchen, then stopped dead in my tracks. There's a door in the kitchen that leads outside, and it was wide open. I know I locked it. I lock all the doors every night. And even if I forgot to lock it, I know I wouldn't leave the door open like this. The whole kitchen floor is wet with rain. I'm calling a locksmith first thing in the morning to come change the locks. Shit. I want to leave, but I don't even know where I'd go. I'm alone out here. Should I find a motel? I just realized my wet clothes are gone. She fucking stole my clothes. I'm not spending the night here. If she was able to navigate in the house and she has no eyes, that means she's familiar with the house and house layout. She's been in there before and knows it well enough to walk around without bumping into anything and making a lot of noise. GTFO. I didn't even think of this. I left, but I'm still freaking out a bit. I'm trying to find a hotel or something. I'm sorry I haven't said anything in a while. I've been staying in a motel about an hour outside of town. When I left the house that night, I just kept driving until I felt like I was far enough away to feel safe. I called a locksmith, but they weren't able to come out right away, and there was no way I was going to going back to the house without new locks. So I've been waiting it out until I've been waiting it out here until I can go back. Basically doing nothing. Jumping at every little sound and feeling crazy. Finally a couple days ago, the locksmith called back and said he'd come out. 
So I checked out of the motel and got in my car to drive home. It was a pretty long drive back, and the closer I got to the woods, the worse I felt. In my head, I knew going back was wrong, but I can't just leave for good. <sighs> I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't leave. I don't expect anyone to understand. I don't even understand. Anyway, I drove past town and reached the woods where the roads get worse and harder to drive on. They get twisty as you drive up to the house, and you have to be careful not to hit deer. I almost always see a dozen or so deer on my drive, but today there were none. Not a single deer in sight. In fact, the woods seemed a lot quieter than usual. I could have been imagining it, but something definitely seemed off. I was almost ready to turn around when something darted across the road. It was so fast that I wasn't sure I saw it at all. I panicked and swerved off the road and into a deep groove by the roadside. By the time I realized what had happened, the thing was gone. I have no idea what it was. It was just a blur. But it wasn't a deer. It was red. Red like blood. Worse, my car was stuck. It's my mom's old car, in this weak little two-wheel drive, and I couldn't manage to get it out of the groove. I sat there for a long time trying to figure out what to do. I knew it wasn't a good idea to walk the rest of the way, but if I didn't, I'd miss the locksmith and I'd have to either spend the night in the house with old locks, or go back to the motel, which I couldn't afford. I wasn't too far from the house, so it made the most sense to walk the rest of the way and call a tow truck from home. I needed to meet the locksmith anyway, so I got out and started walking. Once I was outside, I realized I'd been right about the woods seeming quieter than usual. I couldn't even hear any birds. It was dead silent. My footsteps seemed so loud. Every twig that cracked under my shoe sounded like a bone breaking. I was periodically checking my phone's GPS to make sure I was heading the right way. I had just rechecked my route and was about to put my phone away when I saw something that made my heart sink. It was another one of those artifacts, like the ones I see on my first day here, but it had one of my gloves tied to it from the rainstorm last week. When I left my clothes by the fire to dry, there was a pair of gloves with them. I knew that woman had taken my clothes that night, and this just confirmed it. I also knew I'd find the rest of my clothes before I even saw them. And sure enough, I found more of those artifacts not far from the first. I found my other glove, my socks, and a bandana. Everything from that night except for a sweatshirt I'd been wearing. I left them alone this time. I didn't want to touch them. All I wanted to do was get back to house, get the locks changed, and call a tow truck. I started jogging a bit, wanting nothing more than to get away from those stick things. But after a while, I started to think that I should have been home already. I slowed my pace and took out my phone, but it wouldn't calibrate this time. I couldn't seem to locate me in the GPS. Still, I could hear the lake off to my left which meant if I kept walking alongside it, I should get to my house eventually. So I kept moving, and tried not to think about getting lost. I must have gotten turned around, because I was walking for what seemed like ages. I found myself in a part of the woods that seemed unfamiliar. I had no idea where I was. And then, suddenly, I saw something off in the distance. Something bright white, almost seeming to glow against the dark trees. I couldn't figure out what it was from a distance, so I went closer, trying to be as quiet as I could. When I actually got close enough to see what it was, my mouth literally fell open. It was eggs. Huge eggs. All in a cluster. Like a nest. They were enormous. It's hard to explain their size, but you could sort of see them in relation to my boot here. I felt like I was dreaming. Before I even knew what I was doing, I touched one. I couldn't help myself. It was warm. I had a sudden urge to smash it and see what was inside, but then just as quickly decided against it. I felt sick, like I was going to throw up if I didn't leave right away. I left the clearing and tried to listen for the lake, then headed in that direction. I got to the lake shore and felt a little better. Since I was out of the trees, I had a better view of my surroundings, and I was able to pinpoint my house a ways down the shore. I never thought I'd be so happy to see it. The rest of the way back, I felt like I had vertigo. I couldn't make sense of everything that had just happened. 
I still can't. I reached the house and somehow felt a little better once I was inside. The locksmith arrived a little bit later and changed out the locks. I watched him work in a daze. I also had him install deadbolts. I called the tow truck and they got my car out of the ditch. But now I'm alone again. I can't stop thinking about what I saw. I can't figure any of this out. I don't know what's happening. I know I should just leave. But I just can't. I can't. At least nobody can get inside tonight. At least I'm safe inside. I heard something. Someone was outside. I was in the kitchen, washing a glass, and I heard something outside, on the deck. A scratching sound, and then it stopped. I thought I imagined it, but then I heard footsteps. And for some reason, I just ran outside without thinking. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't even know if I'm scared anymore. I just want answers. I can't be sure, but I think it was her. I saw someone running into the woods. I'm sure it was her, but I couldn't catch her in time. I thought about chasing her into the woods, but decided against it. I don't want to get lost out there at night. I turned around to go back inside, and that's when I saw what she'd been doing on my deck in the first place. I shouldn't still be surprised by these artifacts, but this one was huge. Taller than me. And to have my sweatshirt from the storm tied in the middle. Honestly, I was just going to leave it there. I'm sick of this. I was about to go back inside when I noticed there was something written on the wall behind the artifact. I hadn't even seen it before. Fear the new moon. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know where that woman got a fucking marker and I don't like how fucking familiar she feels around my house and property. I hate that I'm considering this my house now. That this feels normal now. I'm losing it. I want this to end. Whatever this new moon shit is, it feels like something's coming. Fuck this. I guess the next new moon is January 5th. It says there's going to be a storm tomorrow. The new moon is tomorrow too. I should be fine if I just stay inside. It's been storming all day, and into the night. Thunder and everything. I've stayed inside all day. Nothing has happened yet. Maybe nothing will happen. Still, I'm nervous. I've been freaked out all day. Maybe I shouldn't have stayed. I don't know what's wrong with me. I should leave tomorrow. I'm not even really sure what I'm saying. I just need to occupy myself with something. Writing this makes me feel less alone. It's like I'm talking to someone. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving tomorrow. First thing in the morning. I don't care about selling this house anymore. I just want to go home. I just need to make it through the night. I'll be fine if I stay inside. The locks are due and nobody can get in. I'll be fine. I'm going to go get some wine and stay in the upstairs bedroom tonight. It'll be okay. She's here. She was in the cellar. Fuck. I practically ran right into her. She didn't even hear me because of the thunder outside. Her back was to me and she was standing dead still in the middle of the room, just staring at the wall. I couldn't move, I was petrified. All I could do was stand there like a fool and stare at the back of her head. And then she turned around and she spoke to me. She said she won't hurt me. She said she'd explain everything. I'm sorry, this is all happening so fast. She's sitting in my living room now. I can't believe this is happening. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sense of this. She said she'll tell me everything. I'll be back. Okay, so. I'll try to relay everything she said. But there was so much of it, I could barely keep track of it all. I'll start at the beginning. First, she said she made the stick things for my protection. She says it's dangerous out here and she was trying to protect me. When I asked what she was trying to protect me from, she was quiet for a long time. When she finally replied, I could barely hear her. There are things in the water. I didn't really believe her, 
but I didn't have any rational explanation for the things I've seen, so instead I just listened. Here's what she told me. A long time ago, something came from the sky and landed in the lake. It brought something with it, something ancient and strange. The people who lived here began to commune with it. They protected it from the outside world, devoted their lives to it, and in return, the thing gave them a gift. The people were blessed with abnormally long, healthy lives, and many children. But it all came with a price. I had so many questions, but didn't know which ones to ask, so I just sat there in silence and took it all in. The woman continued. In the beginning, there was just the one. It spent most of its time deep in the lake, slumbering. But over time, it made more. Instinctively, I asked about the eggs I saw in the woods. The woman nodded. There are so many of them now, she said. They come from the water to lay eggs, and the people take care of them. Hide them away until they hatch. But when they hatch, they need to feed. At that point, I was starting to put two and two together. I thought about all the twins I've seen in town. She must have sensed my understanding, because she spoke again. I told you there was a price. The people in this town are blessed with many children but they don't get to keep them all. When the eggs hatch, the people must bring one of their own to the woods. The creatures need to eat. She was quiet again then. They start with your eyes. I asked, how, I asked her how she knew all this, but I already knew the answer. I know, because it happened to me, she said. When I was a girl, my father brought me into the wood and the, uh, with the others offered me up to the newborns. She turned her head toward the window, like she was gazing into the distance. They took my eyes. I waited until she was ready to speak again. It was a long time before she did. She told me how she was led to one of the eggs, how she watched it break open, how something came out of it. Before she knew it, something was on her, burrowing into her eyes. She wasn't sure what happened next. She only remembers the searing pain. And then suddenly, she was free. She doesn't know if she managed to push the creature off or if someone helped her. But she got away and ran into the woods. She ran until she couldn't breathe anymore. She was too scared to go home, so she stayed in the woods. Eventually the forest became her home, and she's been there ever since. I felt completely bewildered. None of this made any sense to me. But at the same time, it did. Somehow. I had so many questions I wanted to ask, but I couldn't sort my thoughts. I couldn't figure out what to say. Finally, I asked, Why are you telling me this now, after all this time? The woman didn't say anything at first. She took a long, labored breath. It's the same every year, she said. They come out of the water in the fall lay their eggs. A few of them begin to hatch early. They feed on animals in the woods. They need strength to make it back to the water. But most of them hatch when it's darkest. She turned to me, even without eyes. I felt like she was staring right at me. Tonight is the new moon, she whispered. Tonight is the ceremony. My stomach began to sink as realization set in. Realization about what was happening out there, in the woods, at that very moment. We have to do something to stop it, I blurted out. I started getting out of my chair, but she just shook her head. She said there was nothing we could do. It happens the same way every year. We can't stop it. But I wasn't listening anymore. I don't know what came over me, but I jumped up and ran out the door. Ran into the woods... I don't even know where I was going. At some point, the rain had stopped. It was dark and I couldn't see anything. But I could hear things all around me. Things moving through the trees. And I could see lights in the distance. Fire or flashlights. I don't know. I had no idea where to go or what to do. More than once, something ran by me in the trees. I was using my phone as a flashlight and tried to take pictures of the trees, trying to see what was out there. But everything was happening so fast. I don't know what these are.
This is the clearest shot I could get. They all move so fast. I ran for what seemed like an eternity. Ran in circles. I had no idea where I even was. And then somehow I was back in that same clearing where the eggs had been. But they were gone now. Nothing but bits of shell left on the ground. It was over. I was too late. It had already happened, they clean everything up. I was too late. I stood alone in the clearing. The lights in the distance were disappearing. It was getting quieter. And just like that I was running again. Running toward the lake. I don't even know why. I couldn't do anything. Branches scraped my face as I ran blindly through the trees. I reached the water but there was nothing there. I saw some faint ripples out in the black water but besides that it was silent. It was over. I was too late. I'm back at the house now. The woman is gone. It's so quiet. I don't know what to say right now. I'm going to leave in the morning. I'm sorry. I just don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. I'm still here. I'm alive. I left the house after that night. I decided not to sell it. I don't think anyone would buy it anyway. I locked the doors and got in my car and left. I'm home now, trying to process everything. The morning after, it was so quiet and peaceful in the woods. It was like nothing had happened at all. Still not sure what to believe. It sort of feels like it happened to someone else. Or like I dreamed it, maybe. Sorry it took me so long to update. I wasn't sure what to say. I still have so many questions. I might never have all the answers. But something happened out there. I can't explain it. And I don't know if I could have done anything to stop it. But whatever it was, I can't let it happen again. That's why I'm not selling the house. That woman said this happens every year. If she was telling the truth, then maybe there's something I can do next time. I have to try. So I guess that's all for now. I'm heading back to school next week, so hopefully that will take my mind off things. I need some sense of normalcy again. I'm not sure when I'll tweet again. I need to take a break and get my head together. But I'll be back. I have to go back. I won't let it happen again. And that's the last we ever heard of Gregory88. Back in 2019. It's now uh, August 2022, just to give you an idea of how uh, how different it is. But yeah, um, I found the story to be quite exciting, quite thrilling. Bit of Blair Witchiness going on there, which is always cool. But uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below, and uh, let me know if there's any other stories you want to see. If you like this kind of content, definitely let me know, and I'll be happy to do some more. Take care, guys.